Virtually every hospitalized patient has their uh, oxygen saturation monitored via a pulse oximeter. These pulse oximeters can be applied in a variety of locations, most commonly on one of the digits, but there is a subset of patients who are on vasopressors, have low perfusion, uh, have peripheral vascular disease, have cold extremities, are hemodynamically unstable, in whom the digit sensor either only works intermittently or doesn't work at all. An alternative is to use a sensor on the nasal ala where you have a much more protected circulation and much less prone to vasoconstriction than you are on an extremity. So this is the light emitting diode uh, side with the red LED and the infrared LED. The infrared you can't see because it's infrared. This is the photo detector on what would be the bottom side here. When this is applied, the light emitting side goes to the outside of the nose. The smaller photo detector goes inside. The nasal alar sensor is placed on the nasal ala, the fleshy part of the nose up against the cheek. It can be done with an applicator, as I'm doing here. There we go. Or it can be done simply by popping this open, sliding it in there. And again, you'll notice I'm up against the, literally against the cheek. When you go further out, you are more vulnerable to lower perfusion and also changes associated with temperature and medications. Once the sensor is in place, you usually typically secure it around the ear to strain relief it a little bit. And when I plug it in, you'll be able to see the red one of the two LEDs in this device So now it's working, and when we look up at the monitor, you see your signal acquisition begins, and you have a saturation value that is more resistant to hemodynamic instability than a peripheral sensor. Unlike a disposable finger sensor, you also have predictable orientation between the light emitters and the light detector, whereas in the finger, you have to think about aligning these things, and you're navigating fingernails in different digit sizes. We like to rotate these sensors periodically so we don't get a pressure injury. It removes very smoothly because it's silicone. There's no adhesive there. And then to go to the other side, because we do sight rotation, we just turn the head. We rotate the probe to keep the light to the outside. And then just slide it right in there. Another observation is, is that the cable connecting this to the monitor, the first portion of it is a flat cable, not a round cable like we think of cables. So unlike a nasogastric tube, uh, if you were to put a face mask over, over this because you were going to provide ventilation, you have a flat ceiling surface so it doesn't interfere with uh, mask ventilation as an example. You can see there's actually a space in there so it's very minimal pressure. They're not uncomfortable to wear. People very quickly accommodate to the presence of the probe. They are aware that there's a, a, a reddish light out of the corner of their eye. Because it's connected to the, usually uh, looped over the ear, when you move your head, the sensor doesn't move and you don't see motion artifact like you would from a finger sensor where the finger moves. 